Hello, hello, and welcome to the Second Act Entrepreneur Show. This week we are talking about how to create email marketing that stands out in any inbox. This episode was um, inspired by a suggestion I got over on LinkedIn. And so thank you to all of those that um, gave me feedback on the things you wanted to learn. So standing out in the inboxes can be a big deal. This morning when I woke up, I looked at my um, number of email mar- emails that were in my inbox and there were 63 before 7 a.m. And so I wanted to dive into some best practices, but also some unique ways to not only stand out in the inbox, but get people wanting to read your email marketing um, every time that you show up. So without further ado, let's dive into the specific ways that you can use email marketing to stand out in the inbox and build relationships with your customers. Hey there, I'm Elisa Connor, ex-corporate marketer turned entrepreneur. And along the way, I made all the mistakes, just so you don't have to. Chances are you have a pretty full career. You've got experience, expertise, and probably a whole lot of education. The problem is people can't find you. This is why each week on the Second Act Entrepreneur Show, we feature expert education, marketing insights, and mindset shifts that are gonna help you create a profitable business so you can secure your legacy, ensuring that you thrive not only in your first career, but also your second act. Welcome to the second act entrepreneur show. Email marketing is the best way to captivate and enthrall your audience as well as build trust with them. Yet I've heard from so many people, it's so hard to write emails. Well, I'm here to tell you there are some fun and exciting things on the horizon that are gonna help you do just that. But to get you started, I've created a brand new guide that helps you create that first sequence. It's your your welcome sequence, which basically is a hi, great to meet you. So good to know you. Here's a few things that might help you out kind of sequence. Yet people struggle with writing. I get it. It can be like banging your head on the wall or staring at a blank screen and going, I have nothing to say. And that stinks. So I've made it easy for you. You can get access to this guide for free over at alisaconnor.com forward slash email guide, all one word, and you can grab your copy today. So if you're struggling with writing that welcome series and you don't know what to say in those first few emails to build rapport and trust with your audience, you're, you're going to want to go grab this guide. It was created with you in mind to make it easy for you to get this done in less than an hour. So go grab the guide today at alisaconnor.com forward slash email guide. And I look forward to seeing you in my inbox. Well, well, so you want to use email marketing to grow your business and you want people to actually get excited when they see you in their inbox. But however, what I run into with this more often than not is that people want this, but they don't want to necessarily take the steps um, that they need to take in order to make that a reality. And I would love to sit here and lie to you and say, oh yes, the magic pill is email marketing to grow your business. Um, And it's not going to take any work. You're just going to get it set up, get it set up and it's going to be one and done. But that would not be fair to you. And it would not be fair to your customers um, for you to believe that. And so this episode is not a one and done. It is some simple tactics that you can start to implement that over time will build momentum and help you build your business. The key um, benefit that you often don't hear about with email marketing and done correctly is that when it is done right and the time is taken to um, actually work the system for lack of a better uh, explanation, The long-term benefits are that you have built the rapport up front for not only the initial sale, but for subsequent sales after that. And so when you're looking at um, your customer base and the people that are moving into your funnel, I want you to really stop for a minute and examine, okay, if you want them to purchase this item, this service, this product, this course, whatever it is you're trying to get them into, Oftentimes that's just the beginning, but yet that is where a lot of us stop our marketing and stop our funnel building is that initial phase. But if you are um, strategic about how you move forward with your marketing, you will know that that's just the beginning and that once they have the trust built with you and have taken the leap to invest in working with you, your opportunity is ginormous to continue to 
move them into other products, move them into other services. And instead of spending all of your money on outbound marketing, trying to get people <laughs> to come and find you, you can then market to the audience that you already have. And email marketing really helps you to do that. But the work comes up front because you've got to start building the relationship and the rapport with people on the front end, meaning you have to put forth the effort and the time and invest um, in your audience prior to them ever investing in you. And a lot of times I find that people just want this magical marketing button for their business and then they're deeply unsatisfied and um, feel a little hopeless when it comes to growing their business. And anything that you want in life takes effort that um, is really gonna produce results and email marketing isn't any different. So without, you know, going down the doldrums with email marketing, um, there are a lot of benefits and it doesn't have to be overwhelming and hard, but it is an ongoing process and it isn't something that's gonna pay results immediately. Like you're gonna, it's gonna take some time to do that. And so what brings on this conversation was um, I put out a post on LinkedIn recently and had people just kind of write in with their, with their biggest, um, what if this were possible kind of thing when it, when it comes to email marketing. And one of the things that came out of that discussion was I really want people to look forward to me being in their inbox. I don't want them to just breeze by. And I want, you know, I really want them to not only see that I'm in their inbox, recognize me, and more importantly, open that email and click on it. And so I wanted to give you just some brief ideas and some brief um, examples of what you can do to ensure that th that that happens. And so the first is it's going to come back to the very beginning and how easy you make it for them to determine whether or not they want to be on your list. And there are a lot of privacy changes that have happened, not only in the last year, but specifically the last year in the United States, and then probably the last few years before that in Europe. And if you aren't familiar with those changes in privacy, it is time to familiarize yourself because if you're not aware of the privacy changes that have happened both with the new iOS um, regulations and GDPR, you could get yourself into a lot of trouble. Now, there are people that avoid these, um, they avoid staying on the positive side of things because it seems complicated. So I wanna break that down first of all. Basically, what both of those privacy changes mean in the long run, and, and there's a lot more detail to it, is that you don't want to be adding people to your list that don't wanna hear from you. And more often than not, and I, it's kind of ironic because I've had this happen probably four times in the last week. And so it seems as things get more difficult in the business world, people become more desperate and they try more desperate things. Not knowing the repercussions of that could be very detrimental to their business. So when we're talking about GDPR, that is a privacy act that was implemented in the EU multiple years ago. I think it was almost five years ago now basically saying you cannot email or sell to people via um, you know, email marketing without their explicit permission that they have said they want to receive email from you. And so what that does is it puts the responsibility back onto you, the business owner, to ensure that when someone is signing up for say your freebie, you are explicitly asking their permission to email them in the future, no matter what you're gonna email them. If they don't say yes to that and somebody comes back from the GDPR community and says, hey, we wanna see all of your data on your approval to email all these people, you could be looking at hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of fines. And so this is not something to laugh at. Not to mention that if you do not follow the rules for both that and iOS, I think it's iOS 5 or iOS 7, I can't. I can't remember the exact number, but <clears throat> if you are not following the rules, you will become blacklisted. And that is a really difficult thing to overcome because you don't wanna be sending out a bunch of emails to people and they have people report you as spam or worse in getting in trouble with, we'll just call them the email gods, 
because to try and undo that trouble on the back end is almost impossible. Like it's going to be almost impossible for you to remove that blacklisting. So you don't want to do that. So the number one thing and the number one recommendation I have for people is that before you ever add anyone to your list, make it really, really clear that they are signing up to get emails from you. And there are multiple ways you can do this. I actually reached out to a um, pretty well-established brand last week who, for, for the first time in a long time, they sent me to a confirmation um, subscription subscription and how, what am I trying to say? When you signed up for the email, uh, they sent, send you a confirmation subscription link and you have to click that link before they can ever email you. So this is a great way to basically CYA your email marketing and ensure that you're meeting all the GDPR. However, it's like circa 2010 way of doing it. And the problem with that method is that If that email goes into spam, which it often does because it's not from a known sender or the promotions tab, the person that is trying to get on your list, it may not ever see it. So if they don't click the confirmation, they've signed up for your free download and they don't ever get the email from you, they're just going to assume something on your end is broken and then they're already disappointed. So that's the first problem is that if they don't see that email, they won't get any other emails from you. So it's protecting you as a business. However, it's not (laughs) getting them what they want, which is whatever they just signed up for on your website. The second part of that is that you are forcing them to take yet another step to get to know you. And this is coming from a perspective that these people don't know you, they don't know anything about you. They've already filled out the form with their information and now you're making them do something else. So if you continue to ask and ask and ask, ultimately they'll just be like, it's not worth it. I'll just go find somebody else. And so when we're looking at creating marketing, we want to make it feel seamless. We want to still accomplish our goals by meeting the rules and regulations for GDPR and for iOS 8. I don't know if it's 7 or 8. Anyway, I need to look that up. But the iOS... um, requirements without making it harder for our customer to comply as well. So one of the best ways to do this is to add a checkbox on your form that says, hey, by checking this box, um, you agree to get future emails from us, you know, promotions, whatever you want to put in there that's your blanket statement of how you're going to use their information. And always, um, it doesn't hurt to put something in there that says, you know, we will never sell your information to third parties or something like that. With um, the, there's a couple of things you need to do on the back end with that. So if you have that and it's a checkbox, depending on which software you use, um, if that's something you'd like to know a little bit more about, let me know. And maybe I can uh, create a video for you on the platforms that I use over on um, YouTube. Let me know just, you know, by commenting on this video or um, commenting on the show notes page. But with that, you don't want to pre-check that box because if you do that pretty much just eliminates everything you just tried to set up. And you also want to some way track that they have clicked that box. And so that can be a little bit tricky, but it's not impossible um, if you know how to do it in your email service provider. So both ConvertKit and Active Campaign, which are the two platforms I most often recommend, um, enable you to do that. And I also believe Kajabi allows you to do the same thing. So um, most email service providers that are subscriber-based, which are the three that I just um, recommended, will allow you to have that checkbox and then um, have an action attached to it that tags them as, you know, GDPR compliant or whatever you want it to be. So that if for some reason um, the email gods came back and said, hey, prove that all these people agreed to be on your list, you then can just pull that tag and have that information available for them. So that went a little bit more into the weeds than I had planned, but it's really important to know uh, to start your email relationship with people off on the right foot. And um, I am never a fan of just going and um, scrubbing email lists, you know, from purchasing email lists or going 
to LinkedIn profiles or Facebook profiles or wherever that might be and just um, mass emailing emails that you pull off of those things, those people have not agreed to be on your list. And it actually um, will just put a bad taste in their mouth for you and probably end up sending you not only to the spam filter, but ultimately to get blacklisted. So you're only doing yourself more harm by not just empowering them to choose whether or not they want to be on your list. So then the next step is you want to create a welcoming environment for those people. And more often than not, people will get the form right. They will get the um, email, you know, GDPR rules down. They, they've asked permission to have them on their list and all that sort of stuff. But Where they drop the ball is in the email welcome series. And one of three things happens. Um, Either one, they only send one email. This is, I would say in my experience, 85 to 90% of people will only send one email that says, hey, here's your free stuff. And then they're never to be heard from again until they're ready to sell you something, which is a huge mistake because that's not building trust. It's not building um, a relationship with them. It's just basically like, here's some free, here's your free download. I've done my part. Now I'm going to sell to you. And we all know that it doesn't work that way in any sort of sales situation. You have to build rapport. You have to build trust. You have to alleviate objections. You have to answer questions. All of those things have to happen. And so I would say 85 to 90% of people, that's where they stop. And then they're like, Nope, email sucks. It doesn't work. Well, of course it doesn't work. You sent one email. And then you went directly into a sales email. And so when that happens, um, they will either unsubscribe, they will put you in the trash, or they just won't open your emails. And so we need to get in the practice of one, checking with our audience to see where they're at on the journey. And if they are not in the mode of purchasing, which is about 97% of people that will find you, um, 97% are not ready to buy. I want to stop for just a minute and, and reiterate that because almost 99% of email created from the email marketing standpoint is to sell. And so here you are slamming your sales pitch at somebody who's not ready to buy yet and they don't even know what they want to buy yet, but you're throwing your product at them. And so sure, you might hit the random 3%, which is, you know, if it's 100 people, that's three people that might be ready to buy, but they still have questions to be answered or they would have already bought. And so um, when we're creating those welcome emails, we need to take into consideration either how we're going to filter the information Um, that we gather from them about where they are and how you're going to gather the information for where they are um, and create content based on that knowledge. And so more often than not, I just had this happen. Actually, I did an email review last week. And one of the first things I found in that email series was it immediately went to a product sale. And I was like, okay, you gave them a free download. Chances are, and this will lead me to number two, but chances are, um, we have it in our mind. Hey, they grabbed our free download. They went and they memorized it. Um, they didn't, they probably didn't even open it to be quite honest and, uh, probably got distracted by 15 other things going on in that time that they signed up for it. And by the time they get back to it, they may not even remember why they signed up for it. And so, you going from here's your free download to buy my stuff is insulting to them. One, because they haven't even had time to consume or absorb what you've already sent them. And two, again, you're not building the relationship. And so going directly into a sale in that first email is why they're not paying attention to you in the inbox because you haven't earned the right to sell them anything yet. And so when we're looking at our email marketing strategy, one, we want to customize the content for where the buyer is. And if you missed the buyer's journey episode, I believe it was episode 156, but I'll look up the exact number and put it in the show notes. But that walks you through understanding where your customers are coming from and where they are 
in their journey of buying, which their journey of buying and your journey of selling don't always equal each other. And so I want you to be aware of that because a lot of times you're creating marketing for people who aren't ready to purchase and then you're frustrated because they aren't purchasing. And so it is our job to align what we're doing, what we're saying and how we're marketing to where they are. It's not their job to meet us where we are. And so I wanna make um, that really clear to you (laughs) because there is so much of the opposite out there that if you just take 10 minutes to figure out who your clients are, where they are on the journey and then customize their experience with you, it will monumentally change your business. And so with that being said, I've already said 90, 85 to 90% of people only send one email. Well, the other 5% that send another email or 10, five to 10% either are jumping the gun and not aligning it with where their customer is, or um, they are talking about the level of the problem that they solve from a master's degree level and the person that just came into their funnel is like in kindergarten. And that doesn't mean that they aren't smart. It just means that they don't know what you know about solving this problem. And yet you're talking to them from the level of doctorate and they're in kindergarten trying to figure out their ABCs. And so there's a mismatch there of the language. And so when you're creating your email marketing, this goes back to the previous, you know, concept, which is knowing who you're talking to, knowing where they are on that buying journey, and then using the language they would use to describe their problem, to tell you where they are right now, and listening to what they think they should be doing to solve the problem, even though it may not be what they need. If you meet them where they are and you start that conversation with where they are and take the time to educate and nurture and teach them, they are much more likely to move forward with you in a capacity where they're paying you for your knowledge and your information and your expertise than you starting out over here talking about high level concepts using high level words and making them not feel smart. Do you see the the discombobulation there? Because if you're using those words that you are very familiar with, that you because you are an expert in what you do, and you're talking to them at that level, but they're at this level, there's a total disconnect. And that makes them not feel like they, uh, one, are in the right place because they aren't connecting with you. Like they think you're talking about a problem that they don't have. And two, you've already alienated them because nobody wants to feel like they aren't smart. And so when we're creating that email sequence, there's a very, very specific way to create that so that it is engaging. That does keep them um, interested in what, you know, you have to say and looking forward to your emails. But if you just jump the gun and you try to rush the relationship and you try to bring them up to your level, they're not, they're going to just ignore your emails. They're going to be like, oh, another email. And it's not interesting. Now, the second tip I want to talk about when it comes to email writing is that besides rushing the sale, the other thing that I find with email marketing for most people (laughs) when they start utilizing email as a marketing tactic is that their, their emails are freaking boring. Like, Sorry, you guys, but you, if you want to stand out in the inbox and you want people to look forward to your emails, you need to put in the effort to use creativity to engage conversation. It would be like walking into a networking event, for example, an in-person networking event, a Zoom event, whatever it is, and you are staring at your phone while somebody is trying to talk to you and not paying attention to them. And then you look up and you're like, oh yeah. It's the same thing when you're writing a boring and interesting email and you're not engaging people from the get go. And so there's so many, I wish I had an email, um, (laughs) one this morning that was in my inbox and I was just like, oh geez, this is the worst, the worst, uh, email. And it, it was very obviously from the perspective of, 
I know this. I want you to know it. And so here it is. And honestly, that's not what people are looking for. Like if you're looking at your messaging overall, your messaging is never about what you know and about who who you think needs what you know. It's more about who was who has a problem and how are you uniquely designed to solve that problem and how are you going to get their attention so that they know that you can help them. And where people drop the ball is in all of those areas, but then the third the third one is really most important because if you are showing up in the inbox like every other person that looks like me, 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 I don't, I don't know how to make it any more plain than that. Me, 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 this is this. Then you just blend in with the rest of the noise. But if you have a unique subject line or you have a unique perspective over, about the problem they're having, or you have a unique story you can share um, and you can really grab their attention and start to pique their interest, all it takes is them opening one or two emails and they're like, oh, I can't wait to read the next one because it's going to be hilarious or it's going to have a funny antic or whatever it might be. And so that takes you being authentic. And a lot of times in business, people fear being authentic. And when it comes down to, you've probably heard it a million times, people do business with people. And so often we can look at the mentors in our space the high level coaches that have millions and millions of followers. Um, I'm trying to think like off the top of my head, somebody that comes to mind is Marie Forleo. And so I look at Marie Forleo and she's got millions of people following her. She's made millions of dollars in her business. And it's easy for me to compare myself to her, but her journey is different than mine. She offers something different than I do. And she didn't get there overnight. And so a lot of times we we think these people that have these high level businesses just woke up one day and they have millions of people that follow them. But what we don't see is the part of the journey where they were slugging along trying all these different things, doing, you know, showing up every day, doing what needed to be done and walking the walk to get to where they are now. And ultimately what it came down to for any of them, if you were to sit in a room with them and say, Hey, Oprah, what did it come down to, you know, when it was you building your business, she would say it would be having conversations with people one-on-one. And if you really look back over her career, that's exactly what she did. She was a reporter. And so she would be having those one-on-one conversations. She just happened to be doing it on a television screen. And then she had her own talk show. Did she have a conversation with 500 people in the audience? No, she had a conversation with one person at a time. And those conversations then became a centerpiece for who she is, how she shows up, and how she impacts people still to this day with who she is and what she does. But it didn't start out with her talking to an audience of 1 million people. It started out with her as a reporter who had to struggle to get that job to begin with and then having one-on-one conversations with people. And so when we look at that as our business mantra is like, we're here to serve one person at a time and watch it build, we will be less frustrated with our business and with our marketing and with all of the effort that we put into things. And so I want you to look at your email marketing the same way. When you're creating an email, I want you to write it to one person. Who is that one person? And more often than not, what you will find is that one person is a previous version of you because you have been in those people's shoes. You know what they are going through because you were just there. And if we can remember when we're creating emails and we're creating conversations and we're creating social media posts that we're just talking to one person and we're having a conversation with that person, we're going to bust through that barrier that people, you know, naturally put up to avoid conversations that they don't want to be in. Um, because we are speaking from the heart, we're speaking from experience and we're bringing a unique perspective their way instead of like, okay, here's your free stuff. Now buy from me. People can smell that a mile away. And so if that's how you're approaching your email marketing and then you only show up like, (laughs) 
like the cousin nobody wants to hear from on I'm trying to think the cousin, uh, cousin Eddie on a Christmas vacation, like nobody wants to hear from him. And he's just like so awful when he gets there that people just are like, Oh, just get out. You know, nobody wants to be that person or have that person show up in their inbox. So if that's how you're showing up as cousin Eddie in the inbox, it's no wonder that you're struggling with your email marketing. So I want you to really think about that because when you bring your unique experience and you bring your authenticity and your integrity to the forefront and you're showing up and you're there to serve and you're there to share your experience, of course people are gonna look forward to that because you are invested in them. So don't ask them to invest in you if you aren't willing to invest in them. So ultimately it comes down to just a very few, particular things to really get people to look forward to you in the inbox. One is make sure you're invited to be there. Number two, make sure you show up. Like don't be cousin Eddie who just shows up at Christmas with his motorhome and then like causes havoc everywhere. Show up consistently. And number three is be the person that they respect who shows up with integrity and to serve And remember, you are there to build relationships just one person at a time and treat people as though they are the most important person in that moment. Because yes, you can create, you know, these generic emails that uh, seem like they would appeal to everyone. But in reality, if that person isn't looking for that, the next time you go to send an email, what are the, what's the chance that they're even going to open it? It's much, much smaller because there's no integrity there. There's no relationship building. Um, And then the last piece is just make sure that when you are communicating and you are selling that the, the people that you're wanting to talk with, you're meeting them where they are, not expecting them to meet you where you are in your marketing. So hopefully you have some great takeaways that you can go and plug in to your email marketing so that when <laughs> the next time you send an email out, uh, they are looking forward to hearing you, hearing from you in the inbox. And they are looking forward to having deeper conversations and talking back to you and all of those different things, which is a topic that we're going to talk about in an upcoming episode. So if you have that question of, um, you know, how do I get people to talk back, back to me and have conversations with me? That's coming up. Um, if it's not next week, it's the following week. So look forward to that. And I would love to know, you know, what are your struggles? What are the things you're really uh, hung up on when it comes to email marketing and marketing in general? Let me know if you are watching this video, you can let me know in the comments below. If you are over on the show notes page for the podcast, leave a comment over there and let me know or reach out to me on pretty much any social media platform and send me a direct message. In the meantime, I hope that you will try at least one or two of these things in your email marketing and report back. And if you found value in this episode, I would love for you to share it with someone else who is also struggling with their marketing and growing their business, because you never know what impact you can have on someone else. In the meantime, take care, stay safe and be well, and I'll see you next week. Did you miss something during the podcast? Maybe forgot to take notes? No worries, we've taken all the notes for you. All the resources, links, and information in this episode, you can find over at alisaconnor.com forward slash podcast. That's A-L-I-S-A-C-O-N-N-E-R.com forward slash podcast.